Hey everybody, welcome back to Devoted Kitchen. This is Audrey and we are going to do steak fettuccine alfredo tonight. So I have my steak oiled, seasoned with salt and pepper and it has been sitting out for about 10 minutes to kind of not come to room temperature but just kind of bring up to temperature. That way it's not too cold when it goes into the pan. I've got my pan heating up and I've got my fettuccine noodles going. So hang out here with me and let's see how this recipe goes. So right now we're looking to make sure that it's cooking on the sides. You can see where it's coming up. So we're cooking those about four minutes per side. Maybe that's a better angle. I just got a new camera stand, which I'm really excited about. And it has a light with it, so hopefully that'll help. But we're just letting it sit there and cook. We're not moving it. Um, so far, I really like the way to say feel it. It heats up fairly good. Let's see if it turns out cooking evenly. I'm sure that this thing will be a blessing. Oh, that's good. Right now, I'm just going to take an internal temperature. 133, definitely not bad. So we'll keep cooking. All right, so they're looking good. We're gonna check the temperature. 165, that's good. Oh, this one definitely looks good. Uh, 173, good to go. So I'm gonna put them over here on my plate for breath. And I'm going to cover it with some pickles. This one's going to cover just the season and let that rest. Now I'm going to turn this down a little bit. I'm going to add my butter. Now, if you like this recipe, if you think it looks good, I've got the link down below of where I went. Because I found this on the internet. And I'm just going to rub the butter around. 
Let it cook good. Get all those nice, grisly bits for flavor. Smells good. I'm being super gentle because I'm um, scared to death that I'm going to mess this thing up. That does get hot. It's not too hot right now, but I need to make a habit of doing that. Okay, I'm get this. why it's sticking so much at the bottom. I don't feel like I burnt it too much, but I don't know. Like this is my first time using the cast iron for this, and it's my first time using this cast iron skillet. Alright, so we're letting that cook. Start to smell fragrance. Now we're gonna add. Just stir this up real good. It seems to cook good. Can y'all see that good? I know I'm all up in the way. I mean, it seems to cook good. Smells good. So we're going to add the milk. Make like a broth. We'll let that cook. So now we're going to whisk. Until it gets thick. We're going to get all, try to work out the clumps. I feel like I'm always in y'all's way. I need to work on that. That looks creamy. That looks really good. I'm really impressed with this so far. Oh, there it goes. Starting to bubble. So we're going to let it simmer for a little bit. Add some salt. Add some pepper. Now, look, just dump that in. Make it really cheesy. That, that looks good. That looks, wow, that looks really good. I don't know if you can see that. That looks super good. And if there's anything that you feel like I'm doing wrong as far as a skillet, since I'm not that well-rounded with a skillet, feel free to let me know in the comments. Just here to learn. All right, so we're turning that down. Turn it on. Yeah, I turned it on. Alright, so I'm washing my hands. I'm going to add some tomatoes. Just pop those right on in. Tomatoes. Oh, 
tomato stuff. A little bit at a time. It's kind of cold. Oh. It's definitely overloaded, that's for sure. Maybe I didn't get a big enough pan. Maybe that's the deal. Still though, it looks good. But, I mean, the quality of the pan is nice. I'm not disappointed at all. And I might just not even use all the spinach that that recipe calls for. Which is fine. You can have a little extra salad on the side. That would be good. Because I've got more tomatoes and more spinach and I've got plenty of cheese. It's a staple in my house. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to need all that pasta. Be better than me. Clean your kitchen while you work. Because that's just got to have it out there more than you have. So that's the thing I never saved my water for. You'd think if you laid something out, you'd remember it. But I'm notorious for getting more track. So I'm going to take this steak. I'm going to show you all that. Hopefully my phone will fall in. Oh, yeah. That looks, that looks delicious. That looks so, so delicious. There's an ice. Okay. So now I've got my steak. I'm going to let that simmer for a little bit more. Stir it occasionally because it's sticking and I'm going to... I'd be better off just turning this off because I know I'm going to burn it. I'm going to burn it. That does look really good. Attempt to slice it on a bias. Or diagonally. The one thing that I've learned in cooking is if you make a meal for a family, if you add extras to it, you know, usually you get a steak, 
you want steak, you get a whole steak. But if you add something extra to it, you can stretch your meals out and everybody gets a good portion. They don't need a whole steak. I mean, it's nice, but kind of like having a steak salad. You can have a salad and have your steak on top. That steak turned out good. Y'all only understood how much better I feel about myself. I'm awkward on camera, but if you understood how much better I feel about myself and the way I cook and how I've, done, I've worked on my skills over the years, and I'm not perfect, obviously. I'm still learning. I don't think you could ever stop learning for anything that you do. And it's always fun to try things. Mm. Oh yeah, this is tender. That was good. 